Okay, today we're making Italian anisette cookies, but I'm not putting the anisette in because of my kids' allergies and they don't like the taste of it. It's optional. You can add it in or you can leave it out. Um, you usually just put uh, one and a half tablespoons of Zambuca or anisette right into the cookie dough. Um, but I'm going to leave that part out. In the description, I'll put the ingredients with and without the optional of the anisette or the Zambuca. Um, you can, I used to put it in when I make the icing mix, which I'll show you later. But for now, let's start the cookie dough. What you're going to need is three and a half cups of flour, one stick of butter, um, unsalted, one stick of margarine, three eggs, two tablespoons of vanilla, two tablespoons of baking powder, and a cup of sugar. And that's really it for the cookie dough. Um, the other stuff will be for the icing mixture, which we'll do afterwards. So first what we're going to do is cream the butter and the margarine. So I left it out to soften about two hours. Don't forget, the trick you could also do is just uh, pop it in the microwave. But this is what I'm doing. So, I'll get this creaming. And then we'll slowly add in the uh, egg and the sugar.
bowls. And what I use is like a cookie scoop. Um, I have it from the Pampin Chef. I'll show you the little tool I use. Because I like to make them all one size. If you heard that noise, that was my bird imitating a bird. And that's Cody. I apologize if Cody gets a little bit of an Okay, so I'm going to put this in the fridge to chill. And um, the next step will be rolling them into one inch balls. Okay, so now we're up to the icing where we're going to dip the cookies in. Um, it calls for three quarters of a box of the uh, confectionery sugar. I just eyeball it. This is one cup. So I'm going to do a cup and a half. And that's how I do it. Just a cup and a half. Now this is the step where you would add the one and a half tablespoons of the Zambuca or the Anisette, which I'm not adding. But we're going to add milk. And you're just going to add it um, a tablespoon at a time to get the right consistency. So, let me get the tablespoon and you just use, I use whole milk because it's thicker. Um, I'm going to add two tablespoons to start. And at first it's going to be very thick. You have to add it real slowly. Right now it's still way too thick. So I'm gonna add another tablespoon. Cause if you start to get it too thin, then it just drips off the cookies and it doesn't stick in. So it's kind of trial and error. You just have to keep playing with it. Six tablespoons of milk I added. And I'm just gonna keep mixing, keep mixing. It just looks like a mess, but you gotta get the right consistency, so I'm just gonna keep mixing. Because this is still too thick, but there's still some milk in there, so you don't wanna over milk it because then it's too thin and it has to stick to the cookies. Otherwise it just drips and pours off and it looks like a like a glazed donut. You don't want it to look like that. It actually has to sit on the cookie. So I'm almost, I just need it a little bit thinner. So I'm just going to add, I'm going to add, instead of the two tables, I'm going to add just one and see. Now here, if you made it too thin, you could always go ahead and add more confectionery sugar. Okay, we're starting to get to the right consistency. Yeah. Yeah. Blend it really good, but it's getting there. If you do, you have to work it in slowly. Because if, if you put the Zambuca or the Anisette, that's a liquid, so it makes it thinner. But since I didn't, I'm substituting more milk. But, yeah, see this consistency? This is what you want. Like a thick, because you'll just dip the cookie in it and pull it out. When you turn it upside down, it starts to spread evenly over the cookie. So this is the consistency we want. where it like kind of hangs the drips down. That's when you know you got it right. You could always make more or add more. So we're gonna start out with this amount. And uh, we're gonna preheat the oven to 350. Get that going. And then what we're gonna do is pull the cookie dough out of the fridge, roll them into balls. I'll show you that step. And we're gonna bake them in the oven for about 10 to 12 minutes. Keep your eye on them. I just like the edges to be a little bit golden brown. Okay, time to get them out of the fridge. Okay, so this is my little handy tool that I picked up a few years back from the Pampered Chef. It's the uh, cookie dough sweeter jig. I don't know what they really call it, but anyway. It's perfect because all I do is take it, I scrape it against the side of the bowl and it gives me an even amount. Now you could just go ahead and press it down and it makes the perfect shape cookie. Um, I tend to do this.
this because it's quick and easy. If you don't have one of these, all you would do is take a spatula, scoop some cookie dough off, and then you're just going to roll it in a one inch ball and put it down. And all it does is it keeps your cookies uniform. I make mine on the bigger side. Um, some people years ago did another recipe where they tie the dough and they're not. This is how I do it. Um, I just find it easier and quicker to use this little tool and they come out with the perfect size. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish the tray and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. Okay, so what I did was to save time, I used parchment paper on my cookie trays because I make multiple batches. So rather than have something burnt or sticky or whatever, it's just easy to do parchment paper because I can pull it off, put a new piece on, and my cookie sheets stay clean. So I made two batches. I still have some more dough left. I'm going to put these in the oven at 350 for 10 to 12 minutes. Like I said, you almost want to undercook them. You just want it slightly golden on the bottom. So they're better off a nice, soft, chewy cookie. That's the way we like them. Um, if you want them more firmer, then leave them in until they get totally golden. But I'll show you the way I like it and how I pull them out. So, in the oven we go. Okay, so I'm just going to, I did a few cookies to show you the finished look. But you're just going to take the cookie and just like spin it in the icing. Pull it up, let it drip off and place down. And I usually do like two or three, or even four, however many you want. And what I do is put it on a cookie sheet this way if any icing drips off, it drips down. And then I go back after I dip a few. You don't want the icing to harden before you put the sprinkles. And then you just take your little bottle of nonpareils, which I purchased at Walmart, it's only 82 cents. It's the cheapest nonpareils. Other stores can charge a lot of money for them. And you just sprinkle them on. And that's it. So I'm just gonna finish the tray and I'll show you what it looks like when we're all done. watching my video on the Italian Anazette cookies. I hope you try baking it and enjoy it with your family. Once again, please subscribe to my channel, Cheryl's Two Angels Chic Dumb Cheek. I look forward to making more videos for you all throughout the year. Love and blessings to all.